you know, I know it's probably not the question exactly you want to lead off here, but do you anticipate Julio is going to be at minicamp next week, or have you had conversations with him about that? Yeah, I, you know, we kind of want to win last week. We got conversations. We have conversations all the time with all our players. Uh, there's good communication going back and forth through multiple uh, avenues. So we'll see what happens next week and where we're at, you know. So I can answer that for you next week. And for you, what are you hoping to get out of today? The same thing we try to get out of every day right here. We're just trying to improve. We're trying to get our schemes down, uh, really mentally trying to tax our guys and just getting us ready to go. The whole objective is to be ready to go for the training camp and ready for the opener. Tori McElhaney. Just going off of that, what what when it comes to the install process and when it comes to teaching this the, the guy, this guy's your scheme, what's the base and foundation of which you start with? Well, it's you know obviously the way that things were set up this year, which helped going from last year is is you start virtually. You know we're trying to find we're always trying to find new ways to teach virtually, which we started out with, and then what, now we've got them here. You get them in person. There's different ways as we trying to build them, build the foundation from the ground up. And so you got to assume that nobody knows anything because I think it's a, it's, it's a poor decision to make to assume guys are at different spots. I don't care if they're a 10 year vet or a rookie. So we start everything from the ground up, and that's what we've been building day after day. And that's what you'll see the rest of these OTAs. I know when we talked to Matt a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about the really trying to get the terminology down. He was like, you know, I've played in similar systems, but, you know, just understanding the language of what, the, what this coaching staff wants. When it comes to that, what's the best way that you realize that, like, that you can teach that and help guys come along quicker in that regard? Yeah, yeah I think you have an understanding that everybody learns differently. Uh, Tori, cer certainly I learned different from Matt, and that's no knock on either one of us. The good thing about Matt is he's been in multiple systems. I've been in similar systems with, you know, and I think the easy thing to do is to come in there and try to talk over everybody. Like I could do that to try to sound really smart and use a bunch of buzzwords. Uh, I just, the best teachers are very practical and it's nice to have a reference point with Matt and certain things that he may have done in his past that I may have done. Um, and then what we're doing now. So it is, that you're, everybody's trying to learn a new language and you're trying to be practical about it and teaching them what to do. Do you know that? Yeah, Coach, um, just what's your overview on how where you're at in OTAs and how things have been coming as you're trying to put, pull the team together here? Yeah, we're very happy. I think, you know, obviously the, the guys that have been here, they've been very engaged. Uh, you know, we're obviously adapting to our situation, which is smart. I think you want to look at this year after year. Uh, if we weren't coming out of a pandemic and everything else that's going on, I think, you know, whether it's year one, we'll evaluate obviously next year what we're doing. But we're really happy. I mean, like I said, we're we're trying to learn the scheme so we hit the ground running. We're actually practicing for real in late July. And uh, coach, what's uh, I know it's voluntary, but uh, what's Dante Fowler's status? Uh, will you be seeing him before the mini camp? And uh, <clears throat> what's his uh, update on him? I guess. Yeah, we've been, we've had good communication with Dante, and I think it's healthy. Like you know, you you gotta say what you mean and mean what you say. And so this is voluntary and that's, that's what it is. There's no mixed messages. I think that's uh, silly when, you know, tell them what it is. And we got guys, there's, you know, life happens. There's a lot of things going on. We got guys in and out here certain days. All these guys have family, the family issues come up. They should take care of that stuff. Some guys are moving. Um, you know, we've had great communication with Dante. It's similar to what we we're talking about. The question asked about Julio, we have the mandatory mini camp next week. So hopefully, you know, depending on where we're at next week, we see everybody. Scott Bear, AF.com. Uh, Coach, um, I was just curious uh, when it comes to um, um, when it, when it comes to your new uh, first round draft pick, uh, is is there anything that you've learned about him that maybe you didn't know uh, during the uh, pre-draft process? Anything that you've learned about uh, how he works now that you're able to get him in the building and on the practice field? Sure. Uh, you know, we obviously did a lot of work on Kyle before we brought him in here. Um, you know, we're putting a lot on his plate and seeing where he's at, you know, and we're trying to bring him along the right, right way. Uh, so I don't think that there's, uh, you know, there's obviously when you get taken out high, there's a lot of expectations. But Kyle's got to focus on day to day and learning it, getting up to speed. So he's ready to roll when the season starts. But like I said, we value that tight end position and there's a lot of roles that those guys can play. Zach Klein. 
Hey, Coach, good seeing you. Uh, you said the expectation right now is that they know nothing. Uh, when do you expect them to know everything? No, I'm talking about when you're teaching from the ground up, Zach. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you, when you were going in there and you were going to teach a history class, you know, I would assume that certain people know more about World War II than the others. I mean, you're trying to teach from the ground up and not do it in a patronizing way. Sure. I think we're making good progress every day, and that's, that's really the point I was trying to make. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taking a shot saying they don't know anything and I know everything. Oh, yeah. No, that's not that's not it at all. So I don't want that message out there. No, it's just exactly. it's bad when you go in a room and you just assume they already know what you're talking about. You're literally teaching from the ground up. Sure. How you call I, formations, protections, everything. Yeah, I guess maybe let me rephrase that. What are your expectations when as when the teaching process comes full that you expect your guys to grasp everything that you've implemented since the beginning? Guys on different uh, timetables. I mean, that, that there's a lot of that stuff plays out, but you want to go into camp where they're not hearing things for the first time. So then, you know, you're obviously going to work your fundamentals and your technique and you want guys to have to stop thinking when they break the huddle, you know, offense, defense or special teams, the, the memorization part's over. So then you're learning on how to win the rep and the technique. It all plays into it. So when you do it over and over again, you know, you stop worrying about the things, you know, you know where to get lined up. Now let's go execute. And in your experience, I'm sure you've had individuals who've had uh, their fifth year option declined and you can either pout about it or come out and ball out that next year and prove quote unquote, everybody wrong. Um, what are your expectations for Hayden? How has he handled things? And do you expect him to ball out this year to kind of prove his value yet again? Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't use the ball out term, Zach, no offense there, but uh, Hayden's done a nice job uh, day to day. And uh, you know, Hayden's a really valuable member of this football team. And we, we have high expectations for Hayden. He knows that there's been direct communication, but uh, very pleased with Hayden's maturity and what, what he's brought day in and day out here so far. Thank you. Mike Giardi. Mike. All right. We'll go to Mark Bradley. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Kelly Price. I hope you can hear me because I'm in my car here. Um, I'm just wondering, is it kind of frustrating knowing that there's so many questions about Julio right now and you want to answer questions about the guys, you know, that are there and, um, you know, you're, you're trying to install your new culture and everything. Is it frustrating to have to keep kind of like addressing that? No, part of the job. Anything else, Kelly? Nope, that's it for me. Thanks. All right, Paul Newberry. Coach, curious in your first uh you know, head coaching job. Has anything in these first few months, I know it's very early, obviously, but has anything surprised you or caught you hard a little bit um, getting into this role? I wouldn't say it surprised me, but, you know, obviously when you're going through something the first time, there's things that pop up that you try to anticipate and, you know, you learn to get to deal with them and manage your time effectively so you don't get sucked into a five minute conversation that becomes 45 minutes so you can get a lot accomplished day in and day out. But, That'd probably be the biggest transition so far. Is it, uh, has it been, how's it been to go from where you're, you know, you know, concerned with a specific part of the team? I re I've heard head coaches when they first get into that job saying, you know, learning to delegate is maybe the, the hardest thing for them to do, to know they can't do everything. And the, you know, hands-on they used to have in certain areas they can't have anymore. Is, uh, has that been tough for you? No, we feel very, uh, obviously really happy with the staff we hired. And that's the, the biggest part of the job and you're going through that hiring you got to hire good people and let them do their job and you know set the expectations what we want and we've got we've got a really good staff here Tanisha Batiste morning coach small sample size but for the rookie class who has impressed you so far in terms of maybe what they've learned some of what they've learned in the building and maybe you're starting to see them already translate that to the field to practice yeah, just because the way we've got it set up, it's it's hard to answer that. Uh, it's it's been a really good rookie class. It's a mature rookie class. Um, you know, some of the stuff that you may have to deal with in certain years, we haven't had to, you know, not on wood so far. Uh, but they've done a good job. And then we're like I said, we're trying to build this, and everybody around the league is doing different things, and that's great. But we're trying to be creative in what makes sense for the Atlanta Falcons, and and this rookie class has done a good job so far of doing everything we've asked them to do. And, they're engaged and they're they're trying to improve every day. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Time for a few follow-ups. Uh, Michael Rothstein, do you have anything? 
Yeah, I, I do. I kind of just want to hit on, on one thing that how have you managed to kind of keep the, uh, yourself on schedule? Like, is that are you relying a lot on Sarah? Or are you just kind of like, hey, at X time, I have to be out of here. How do you manage that personally? Yeah, you want to make time for everybody on your staff and, and players and, and things that come up. You know, obviously, Terry and I talk multiple times a day and it is about managing time. Sarah has a, uh, a big role here and so does uh, Griff, Ryan Griffin. So, I mean, like I said, we, we've got an excellent staff. Everybody has a job to do and they, they do, do it well. And so, uh, yeah, you rely on everybody. I mean, she, she does a good job keeping me on, on schedule. Appreciate it. Tori McElhaney. Yeah, just one for me. We were talking to Jake Matthews last week, and he made the comment that he was really proud of Matt Hennessy's development as a communicator. And I know it's only a short window of which you've been able to see him, but what's what's your just your general evaluation of Matt Hennessy's communication skills at that center position? Yeah, Matt's done a good job. Um, he's that's an important role for for us in particular that center spot, and uh, there's good competition there. Matt, I mean, again, we won't. As it goes into camp, get into camp, we got a couple guys that we feel can pull the ball well. But Matt, that's a big role, and it's a there's a big shoes to fill. He knows that Alex Mack was a heck of a player here and has had a, a great career in the NFL. So uh, everything we've asked Matt to do so far, he's done and done well. Deal it. Yeah, coach. Just uh, wanted to know how Marlon Davidson was doing and how Dion is doing. Uh, you know, as in his role, Deion Jones is, you know, one of the leaders on the defense side of the ball. Yeah, uh, you know, again, with Marlon, he's, he's done a good job. He's been working hard uh, this whole offseason, you know, getting healthy and uh, really happy how Marlon's progressed. So, again, with, everybody will have the same opportunity. Like we continue to, to explain to these guys, the best players will play, and everybody, it doesn't matter where you're drafted, where you come from, the best players are going to play. Um, and then Dion, it's been good having Dion around here. Again, I can only go from my experience with Dion, but we, we've got a lot of guys, leaders on this team. And like I said, the leadership comes at all shapes and sizes and guys that, that be themselves. And some, some guys lead by example. Some guys are, you know, they're more verbal. But uh, very pleased with what Dion's done so far since he's been here. Scott Bear. Uh, Coach, um, going back to Kyle, is is he a fun, versatile talent to be able to create and and um, design plays for? Just given that you can use him in so many different ways, that you that you can go up to that uh, chalkboard and find new and in, in, innovative ways to uh, add him into your schemes and packages. We think we got a lot of guys that can that can play multiple roles for us, and that's what's going to be the fun part about when we get in the camp and we're, you know everybody's here and we're actually you know, practicing and getting ready for these preseason games. And, but we feel on, a, on really in all three phases, we've got a lot of players. Uh, I know we were joking about the versatility post-draft, but there's a lot of guys. And, you know, I don't want to discredit anybody else that, that can play multiple roles for us. You know, we don't let that spot between, the, you know, Hayden, he can play multiple roles for us. You know, Lee Smith, you know, he'll have multiple roles. Keith Smith. So, again, those guys, when you get into, into those base personnel groups, they can do a lot of different different jobs for us. All right, time for one more. Is that Con? Yeah, I, I mentioned leaders on Stephen Means. He's been so valuable in, in the community, Coach. Your Walter Payton uh, nominee a, a year ago. Have you gotten to spend some time with him and just talk uh, about life away from football with Stephen? Yeah, again, we're trying to organically develop relationships with all those guys. Uh, you know, going back to the question earlier, that that is not a challenge, but that's a fun part. You know, it's when you go from being a position coach, obviously you know your guys really well offensively. Uh, especially when you're a spot for a long time, you know those guys well, and, and now you're trying to naturally develop relationships with every member of this team. Um, but Steven's a you know, great guy to get to know, and he's a mature guy. He's authentic. Uh, so very happy so far getting, you know, developing a relationship with Steven.